All right. Hey, did you come ready to receive the Word of God this morning? I tell you, I am fired up this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 6, and I'm concluding the full gospel series. And I, I started the whole series out as a set of doctrinal messages, but, man, I felt like the Lord shifted my emphasis a couple weeks ago. So he's put a message on my heart, which is a good primer, good primer for our uh, series of meetings here with my boy Ted Shuttlesworth Jr. Listen, you don't want to miss this guy next week. He is going to be off the hook all week, and um, I'm just blessed to have him. I feel like personally I'm going to learn a lot, and I'm looking for the Lord to really touch me in a fresh, new way. So you want to make plans to be here for him. He's going to be great. All right, Acts chapter 6, I'm going to read in verse 1 all the way down to verse 7. I want to read these verses just to provide some context, and then we're going to pray. Acts chapter 6, verse 1, we'll read a few verses. He said, now in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. It says, the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it's not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they'd prayed, they laid hands on them. And it says in verse 7, the word of God spread, the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Let's pray. Lord, this morning I pray that the word of God would Grow and multiply, spread and multiply, just like we read here in the book of Acts. Father, I pray for hearts to be open. I pray for lives to change. God, I pray that we would be full of what you have for us, fullness of the Spirit of God this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You know, I was uh, taking a walk down memory lane, and I vividly remember what it was like when I rededicated my life. I was 17 years old, and I mean, I was on fire for God. And I, I, I remember, you know, just, have you ever had those moments where you're so passionate and hungry for God? It's like nothing else matters. And I remember living in that season for those early years, and I feel in my heart that same rekindling, a same fervor welling up within me today, and I embrace what God wants to do in my life. Because, you know, America is in a place right now where we need something fresh from the Lord. Can I get a witness on that? Uh, and you know that no move of God ever came from passivity or apathy. There's never been something great that God did that came because people were lethargic, lukewarm, and slow to act. It came because God's people were hungry and fired up for him. And the early church was the same way. They were seeking for people who were full of the Holy Spirit. That's what we read right here. They were looking for people who, who were hungry for the things of God. And so what I want to do this morning is I'm going to walk through uh, Acts chapter 6 and Acts chapter 7, and I want to highlight for you uh, what we could call some symptoms of the Spirit. Symptoms is a buzzword right now because, you know, the whole world is like caught up in a pandemic. And that's why when you go certain places, like check your temperature, and they want to make sure that you're all right. They want to check you to see if you've got any kind of symptoms in your life. Symptoms of sickness. And so this morning, I'm not talking about having a fever. I'm talking about having some fervor for the Lord and the things of God. Uh, these are indications. These are some signs. These are some symptoms that God might be at work in your heart. So let's highlight some symptoms for you this morning. I'm starting in Acts chapter 6. And you know the story. We just read it. The disciples were out looking for a few good men. I'm going to pick it up here in verse number 3. He said, the apostles were seeking out for seven men of good reputation who were full, everyone say full, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom it says we may appoint over this business, this, this idea that we were going to take care of people in the church, the daily distribution. Now, the first indication that you are full of God's Spirit from this text is that you will be full of wisdom. Full of wisdom. You want to know what the first evidence is, the first indication the first sign that you're full of the Spirit of God is you're full of wisdom. Wisdom, we could say, is the ability to apply the things that you know. 
the ability to use the knowledge that you have. The trouble with the times that we live in is that we've taken education and elevated it to such a place that we think it compares with wisdom. But you know that education and knowledge cannot be compared to wisdom. Because wisdom is how character works. Wisdom is how you, you can use good sense in situations to turn things around. It's, it's your ability to take what you know and make it work in situations. So these guys were full of the Spirit, and they were full of wisdom. I like how Proverbs chapter 1 describes wisdom. You know, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. He says, wisdom is the principal thing. Like, it's the most important thing. There's something about wisdom that is of utmost importance that you need in your life. And wisdom is an incredible thing according to the Bible. Wisdom will prolong your days. It'll give you longevity. Wisdom is something that will bring wealth and generate wealth into your life. Wisdom here, when these men were full of good reputation, we could also say that wisdom is one of those things that helps you with your witness. The wisdom of God, being full of the Spirit of God, is there so you can be an effective witness for people. You know how to utilize what God has given you in a wise way so you can make an impact in someone's life. Good reputation. Uh, you know, I was thinking about, you know, charismatics in church. We're a spirit-filled church. We embrace the Holy Spirit, His gifts, His activities. But it seems a lot of times like some of the spirit-filled people that I have been around haven't always been able to use wisdom appropriately in situations. And I, I like to laugh about it because one of the buzzways you can tell when someone may not be using wisdom is they'll often tell you how much God has spoke to them. <laughs> well, the Lord told me. And my grandma was laughing about that one time because she had run a restaurant and she was, uh, you know, had a guy there who walked in and he said that the Lord had told her that he was going to be her manager. And she said, well, really? Why didn't he tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> See, sometimes people can get out there in zany land, in weirdoville, and what it does is it ruins your witness. The, the wisdom of God, when you really are full of God's Spirit, you will know how to use wisdom. These guys were full of the Holy Spirit and had a good reputation. They were wise in the things that they did. That, that's all people need to see is some sincerity, some wisdom, an honest and sincere heart. That's, that's how the wisdom of God operates in a person. You know, I think about the wisdom of God. What's incredible about it is that God's wisdom is available to you right now, sitting right where you're at. All you have to do for the wisdom of God to operate in your life is simply ask for it. That's what James said. If you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And he'll give it to you freely. The Bible tells us that Jesus has become our wisdom. Think about that. He, he, he is our wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom of God available for you and for me right now. And it tells us that we can abound in this wisdom. In fact, the Bible says that we should pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to flood our lives. The wisdom of God exists right now for you. In fact, it's described as one of the seven spirits of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, that's an aspect of who Jesus is. His wisdom is available to you right now in, in the moment that you need it. All you have to do is ask for it. All you have to do is what the disciples did. If you read the next verse in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, it says that they wanted to give themselves over to prayer and the ministry of the word. If you need wisdom in a situation, I just want to challenge you to get in the scriptures, open them up pray, spend some time with the Lord, you'll be amazed at the wisdom of God that will flood your soul. He's got answers for the situations that you're faced with. It, you notice that these guys were a collective. They were a group of people. And when the text is talking, it talks in the terms of we. Sometimes you get wisdom from the people that you associate with. When you walk with the wise, you'll be wise. So if you need wisdom, it's available. You've got to ask for it. You've got to seek God for it and walk with wise people. It, it's it's what happens to people who are full of the Holy Spirit. They get wisdom in their lives. You know, I like how the Bible also describes the wisdom of God as the foolishness of the world. You know, when, when the Bible gives you ideas on things to do, when it, when it describes some activities that Christians should take place, part of, it's like sometimes it doesn't always make sense. Like, it, it doesn't always make sense for you to give your money away but in God's kingdom, it comes back multiplied. That doesn't seem like it makes any sense. It doesn't make any sense if you're leading something 
for you to act as a servant leader. Sometimes it seems like that's a counterproductive approach, but that's the way God kingdoms work. Sometimes it would seem like forgiving people is counterproductive when you feel like slapping them. Come on, somebody. When you feel like screaming at them. When you're frustrated in situations. And yet Jesus is the one who said that by turning the other cheek, if someone hits you and someone strikes you, you turn the other cheek. That, that's where grace and love is the highest level there is. So the wisdom of God is available for you in any situation, any moment, any time. You need. If you need wisdom, it's right here for you. And when you walk with God, his wisdom becomes available. It's an incredible thing. His ability to give you insight in what to do, to know how to respond to people, to know how to love people, to know how to act tactfully, to know how to be a witness. The wisdom of God is available to people who are full of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm gonna, that, that would be like, you know, the fever or like we're taking your temperature. We're checking the wisdom gauge up there. <laughs> Let me give you a second symptom, all right? Symptom number two is in verse five, Acts 6, verse 5. It says this, that the saying pleased the, the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen. Much of our story today is going to center around a man whose name was Stephen. And you'll notice Stephen was full of faith and the Holy Spirit. So we have fullness of the Holy Spirit here in a second part of this text. Full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And Stephen's got his posse with him. He's got Philip and Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas. The homeboys he was hanging out with. Yeah, what we've got here are some people full of faith. Now, here's a second indication you are full of the Holy Spirit. You're a person who is full of faith. You're full of faith. Faith, we could say, according to the Bible, is the ability to see potential that exists. It's the ability to see in unseen things. It's the ability to... to to see something that doesn't exist. That's why the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. There's something about stepping out in faith that God uses to help fulfill your destiny when you can't see it, when you don't know what to do with it. it, it it's, it's seeing things that are in secret places. It's seeing things that are yet to come and understand that if you just act and step out in faith, God will fulfill those things. You know, here we're, we're talking about, you know, this, this fullness, the full gospel. So when we talk about someone who's full of faith, what we're talking about is someone, by definition, who is faithful. Faithful. So that means there's a commitment in their life. It means that they're willing to be consistent and follow through in, in areas and aspects of their life. F follow through. Commitment. Uh, it means that they don't give up. They don't give back. It means that they keep on pressing forward. It means that they do what they say. Do you know the most spirit-filled people that I know, the people who are full of the Holy Ghost the most, are people who follow through with their commitments. They keep on moving forward. They've got character. They don't shrink back. There's something in their life that allows them to just follow with what God has put in their heart, even when they don't see it, when they don't feel it, just like we sang about this morning, when you don't know what to do, when you're frustrated, when you've got confusion, when, when you're... You're surrounded and, and, and feel like you don't know what's going to happen. Faith is what allows you to have eyes to see what you should do in situations. Yeah. It, it, this word faith is the Greek word pistis. You know what that word pistis means? It describes a living faith, something that's alive. That's why the Bible says that faith without works is dead. That's what keeps it committed. That's what keeps it growing. Faith is one of those things that's continuous. It's ever growing in your heart. It keeps on moving forward. So these guys are full of faith. They're full of the Holy Spirit. You know, people who are full of faith are contagious. There's another word for, uh, like, the times we live in in the COVID society right now. Everyone's worried about contagiousness. And they're washing our hands, and, you know, we're wearing masks. That's what, that's what they've asked us to do because we're worried about the spreading of germs. But I found that people who are full of of faith are also highly contagious. That means it spreads around other people. Have you ever hung out with somebody who was full of faith and it was like, man, it inspired you? Like it rubbed off on you? Like you wanted to be a better witness? You wanted to let your light shine? You wanted to be a blessing to people? 
It's amazing what that little bit of faith on the inside of you will do. It will spread, it'll grow, it'll multiply in your life. And I, I think it's amazing because this text tells us that it was Stephen and the group of people that he was with. You have seven people that they were looking for. It, it, see, it's infectious and influential. When you are full of faith, it's something that spreads and multiplies and grows in your life. It just grows. It's contagious. And faith, if you didn't know, when you're full of faith, is communicated. You can always spot somebody who's full of faith because of the things that they're saying out of their mouth. They're not down, not depressed, not criticizing. They won't be swearing at people. People who are full of faith are uplifting. They're positive. They're confessing scriptures. They're declaring the promises of God. They're holding on to promises that they won't let go. And, and you can hear it in the things that they're saying. It's, it's something that's released in your life. It comes out of your mouth. That's what the Bible says. It says that's how you got saved. It, it says you confess with, with your mouth. There's something about the mouth that's connected to the heart that faith moves through. And when you've heard the preaching of the word, that's how faith comes, when you hear it. See, faith is communicated. It's spoken. You hear it, by, and it grows in your heart. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See, there's, there's just something about being full of faith. It, 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 faith is like a muscle that you exercise. You ever, you know, been out of shape for a while, and then you exercise a muscle and you get sore? You know, because it was like you were pulling on it. Sometimes when you get sick, it feels like you've got sore muscles. You know, like the joints are hurting. So it, it, it's a symptom. And, and, and maybe if you've got some soreness going on, it just could mean that you're exercising some faith muscles. But people who are full of the Holy Spirit don't back down. They're, they're not intimidated. They're not held up. They're going to keep on looking for the promise of God, look for the plan of God. They don't hold back. See, we're full of faith. We're people who are full of the Holy Spirit. We're people who want to exercise the spiritual gifts that God has given us through faith. Yeah. I'm teaching you how to be full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Listen, man, you, you better understand the times that we live in require that we be full of God's Spirit. I'm just telling you, you got to be full of faith, full of the Spirit. Here, here, here's a third symptom right here. All right, jump down to verse number 8, Acts 6, verse 8. Here we got Stephen again. Stephen, it says, was full of faith and power. We've got scriptures everywhere about people being full of things. Full of faith and power. Your translation, it might say grace, but the word here for faith is this Greek word pistis, this, this living faith. It's full of faith and power. And it says that he did great wonders and signs among the people. Now, here is a third symptom. And that's that you are full of power. This word here is the word dunamis, where we get dynamic, dynamite. We're talking about an energetic power. This is describing God's capacity, his power, his ability uh, it's, a, it's like a supply of energy. You know, God has an unlimited supply of energy. God is able to take situations that seem impossible and turn them around. And he does it through his power, the power of God. That's, that's how God works in situations. He just gives you little droplets of his power that happen to be very explosive. God's power works in situations. It's alive. He said faith and power. You know, the, the power of God is miraculous. In other words, it's like unexplainable. It, when you don't know what to do in situations, when, when you feel frustrated, when you're hopeless, God's power can show up in incredible ways. It says that wonders and signs, what where Stephen went, wonders and signs, you know, uh, a wonder is something that makes you stop and think when you see it. And a sign is something that indicates to you that it's pointing you in a direction. It's pointing you to the power of God. It's pointing you to God's ability in a situation. See, God's power is miraculous. Now, I was telling you, we are a spirit-filled church, so we are not cessationalists. There's a difference between a cessationalist and someone who is a sensational person. Cessation is not sensation. Cessation means you have believed the gifts have diminished, they're gone, they don't exist anymore, and, and that God is not working that way. But I don't believe that. You know why I don't believe that? 
is I've seen too much. You just come with me over to India sometime. <laughs> you go on the mission field and watch when God touches people. Watch when people who had snake bites and couldn't close their fists get prayed for and their hands open up. Watch when people get out of wheelchairs. Watch when people who have been slithering around with demons uh, get delivered from the power of Jesus' name. It's an incredible thing. The power of God is powerful. It could turn any situation around. And it's a work. Yeah, we're describing the power of God. It's miraculous. Let me tell you what else the power of God is. It's practical. I think about the verse right here. Stephen was helping out in the daily distribution, the ministering of needs. That's what they were talking about, the, the widows who've been neglected. So God has this ability, this power, to make daily provision in your life. Psalm 103 says daily he loads us with benefits. The Bible says, G Jesus said it when he taught us how to pray, daily bread. He's, he's helping us understand that he can make provision in the moments that you need him the most. He's a daily provider. And his power is unlimited. It'll show up in miraculous situations, and it's a very practical thing. Whenever you need it, he's right there to help you. I want to ask you that question this morning. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like God let you down and didn't provide for you? Can you make that statement? Because every chance I've had, every time I've needed something, I've seen God come through in moments. You can, you can argue with it in your mind, but your needs have been met. I would be willing to bet. He is a provider. He'll take care of you and provide for you in situations. He's powerful. He's practical. Let me tell you about the, the power of God. The power of God is present. It's right now when you need it, like a live wire. All you need to do is take faith and plug it into the wall, and you can have supply on demand. That's what his power is available for. People think sometimes it just happens sovereignly, or they just don't know how to explain it. All it takes is a person who will believe God and plug in. And if you're in the will of God, if you've been believing God, and you plug in, his power is present. I like that verse in Luke. It says, the power of the Lord is present to heal. Yeah. And pe I've been in meetings like that where there's expectation, anticipation in the things that God does. It's an incredible atmosphere to be at. His power is present. It's right now. It's available to you right now. But I want to warn you, it's a live wire. Sometimes it's too hot for you to handle. And I know people who, when they experience the power of God, sometimes they just don't know how to handle it. They'll get shaken. They'll get stirred. They're not, they, might, they might run around a little bit. The power of God is hot. You know, it's a funny thing about Stephen. Stephen was used by God to administrate daily needs. And Stephen was working signs and wonders. And when he's doing this, it created quite a stir. Because if you read verse 10, he's going to get into argument with people who were trying to resist him. It says that they could not resist the wisdom and the spirit by which Stephen was speaking. And what I have discovered about people that are full of faith, full of power, full of the Holy Spirit, is they tend to be resisted by religious people. Yeah, in fact, you might be feeling resistance this morning. You might not like what's being said. It might be frustrating to you. And, and that might be a resistance towards what God wants to do by his spirit. This is what happens to people. They, they might hear something, it's intimidating, it frustrates them, they might disagree, and something is resisting what God wants to do. That's why it takes people who are full of the Holy Spirit and power to have breakthroughs. Oh, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> Stepping on toes. <laughs> Stephen's creating quite a stir. He's, pre he's, he's preaching, he's, miracles are taking place. People, other, you know, the Pharisees, they didn't like it. And so they decide to drag the man in court. You know, that's what Acts chapter 6 and 7 are about. And so Stephen starts giving his dissertation, his defense on what he's doing. He's, he's going to take a little history route. He's going to talk about Abraham. He's going to talk about Moses. And he gets into Joshua, and he gets into David, and he gets into Stephen, and, and he, he gets into, you know, all the things that are taking place, all the history things they're faced with. He calls them stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart. <laughs> he starts rebuking religious people for trying to resist what God is up to doing. Now, now let, me, let me give you a seventh thing here, or a fourth thing. Acts chapter 4, uh, Acts chapter 7, I'm sorry, verse 54. Here is 
Here's the fourth symptom I want to highlight. Verse 54, Acts 7, verse 54. It says, when they heard these things, <laughs> when they heard him say, you guys are stiff-necked, uncircumcised in heart, and he, he said, which of the you know, prophets didn't your fathers try to kill? When they heard these things in verse 54, it says they were cut to the heart. Because, you know, the sword of the Spirit is quite sharp. And it can penetrate between soul and spirit. And it, it starts cutting in their hearts. And it says they gnashed at him with their teeth. These guys were furious. But what did it say in verse 55? S Stephen, it says, was full of the Holy Spirit. And it says he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He said, look, I see the heavens open. I see the Son of Man, Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned the man. That's his testimony. Now, let me give you the fourth symptom of somebody who really is full of the Spirit of God in their life. There is a boldness that comes out of them. I'm just giving you some symptoms this morning. Like wisdom is a symptom. Faith is a symptom. Power is a symptom. And boldness is a symptom. Boldness. Stephen was courageous. Stephen was fearless. Stephen was not backing down to what they were trying to stop him from doing. He was bold in the things that he said. It, it, it was like, you know, think about how gifted Stephen is. Stephen is very articulate. I mean, he can preach. He's got an administrational gift. He's you know, he's helping daily distributions. He's got the power of God operating his life, working of miracles as a gift. And Stephen also had the gift of martyrdom, which, by the way, is a one-time gift. only works once. <laughs> St Stephen's got this gift. He's bold. He's courageous. You know, the thing about being bold is that sometimes when boldness hits you, it's almost like it possesses you. If you've ever had a moment like that, it, it, it's like, Boldness is like something that comes within you internally. It rises up. You ever had a moment like that when you needed to be bold? Could have been the Spirit of God working in you. Yeah. You know, I'm a sucker for autobiographies. I love to read. And so I, I'm reading constantly. I love to read about people's stories and their histories. Someone gave me a book about a man named Morris Cirillo. You ever heard of Morris Cirillo? Morris Cirillo, he was a, a preacher, an evangelist. He went home to be with the Lord. And he was describing the story of his first time. He was in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And, and the pastors came to him, and they said, do not go to the service tonight because it's filled with witch doctors, and they want to kill you. He said he was thinking about it, but he's a man of God. He decided to go. And there was a tremendous, you know, battle in the heavens. He could feel it. He could feel the pressure. He could feel the atmosphere. And, and so Morris got up there to preach to 20,000 people. And as he started preaching, the voodoo stance, they started, you know, hitting the drums. It was a chaotic place. And three times Morris asked everybody to be quiet, politely, to which they would not reply. In fact, this was such a great meeting. He had the president of the nation there. They had generals there. And everyone was about to walk out because he couldn't get the crowd to quiet down. And he said when that happened, something welled up on the inside of him. He could feel something coming up inside of him, and he looked at the guy who was the translator, and if you ever heard Morris preach, he would talk like this, and he said, tell them everything I'm about to say. And so the translator followed, and he yelled out in the crowd, he said, I will not be responsible if the next person in here who makes noise drops dead. <laughs> and slowly, things started quieting down. He had their attention. They told him later they weren't expecting him to come out with power like that, with, with boldness. They were shocked at how bold he got. And for 20 minutes, he preached the gospel, transformed the nation, because boldness rose up within his heart. See, boldness is a powerful thing. Boldness is something that's internal. It, it'll come up within you, feel the spirit of God, and you get bold in the situation. But boldness often happens because of external situations. Internal, but maybe it's from external circumstances, things that are beyond your control, things that are out of your reach. Maybe the situation requires it. You know, I had a, my, my, my mom's other sister, Aunt Darla. Mom has two sisters, Darla and Marcia. I would say Aunt Darla is the most outspoken one. She lives in Wyoming. One time she was in Denver shopping, and she said that she was, you know, there in the back of her, uh, I think she had like a Jeep Wrangler or something. She was 
working, and a man came from behind her, grabbed her by the neck, and put her face down and said, I want your money. Give me whatever you have. And, you know, she was going through purse. She was freaking out. She had a few credit cards, didn't have much cash. So he took her watch and some credit cards, shoved her in there, walked off. But Darla felt some boldness come on her. And after she kind of picked herself up from the seat, she walked out in the parking garage and she said, Sir, you need the Lord. <laughs> you know what that man did? He turned, he stopped, and he started crying. He said, You're right. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. <laughs> he, she said, If you just had asked me for money, I would have given you money. Boldness rose up within her. She prayed for him right there. That's a boldness. Sometimes it's from external situations. It takes boldness to do that. You know, boldness, it's internal, it's external, but boldness is one of those things that's like, it's unique to people. It's, it, it's like individual, and different people will manifest boldness in different ways. It doesn't always work the same for some people, because there's some people who are shouters. Can I get a witness from the shouter? Like you, yeah, I got shouters over there, yeah. I got other people who boldness might manifest through confrontation. They've got no problem getting in someone's grill. And, and they're nice about it. They're polite about it. They don't mind heated exchanges. They can stay calm. It's a boldness that comes. Other people demonstrate boldness with a dogged determination to just keep going. They, they, every time they get down, they get right back up. They're very bold about achieving goals and going after things. They stay after it. Boldness. And I'll tell you something. If there ever was a time for you to be bold, it's right now. And I'm just telling you that the American church has very little boldness because the American church is not really as full of the Holy Spirit as they think they are. We have created church systems to keep people comfortable and cozy, and we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to preach controversial messages. And all the while, as we think people are staying cozy, society is in trouble. And it's because people are not filled with the Holy Spirit and boldness and power and wisdom as they ought to be. So I'm just preaching this morning what the Lord put in my heart. Because I'm telling you, we're living in moments right now where you better be ready. You better be bold. You better have a light that's shining. You better be a witness. You better know when the time comes for you to share something, it's got to be in your heart. It's got to be real. And it takes the Holy Spirit to, sh to, to, to rise up within you when you don't know what to say. To say right things. Yeah. Symptoms of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Symptoms. Man, <laughs> I still think it's amazing. I talk about it all the time. I was in India and, and London and Nepal just before they shut everything down. I mean, I made it back within a week, right? And I was like horribly sick, as most of you know. I, <laughs> I was drinking Benadryl by the bottle because, you know, they were saying they're going to close the borders and not let people through. And you do not want to be stuck in India. You know, with <laughs> so I, I remember I was on the London Underground sweating bullets. I, got, I was at Heathrow Airport, and I did everything I could to look like I wasn't sweating. You know, I, had, <laughs> I didn't want to look like, <laughs> but I had symptoms. I had symptoms. Now, I want to ask you this morning. I want to ask you, it, do you have any active symptoms of the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you have any active symptoms? I mean, maybe this morning you, you don't have any fervor. You really do have a fever. Maybe there's no life within you. Maybe the fervor and the fire in there. Hmm. I don't want a Christianity that does not have the fire and the power of God. It's useless. The Bible says it's empty and religious. That's what it describes it as. So maybe this morning, we got to do a little uh, temperature check here and find out what kind of symptoms you might be demonstrating. Like the wisdom of God, is it operating in your life? Is wisdom available when you need it? Every time I go someplace with preachers, we'll, we'll sit down and they, and they always want to know, hey, what can I pray for you about? You know, what, what's going on? What's in your life? And I always tell them, pray for wisdom. Pray for the wisdom of God in my life. If I could do with one thing to pray, I always pray the wisdom of God. And I feel, how many of you could use wisdom in your life this morning? Who needs wisdom in their life? Yeah. I mean, I always need wisdom. So I'm going to pray for wisdom for you, and I want you to pray for wisdom for me. Because I need to know what to do in situations. But I've had moments where God has given me precise wisdom, how to handle people, how to handle situations, how to make decisions. And it's the wisdom of God. Or maybe this morning um, your faith hasn't been exercised like it needs to be. That could be the reason why you're sore. <laughs> you think 
you think you pulled a muscle. It could be a symptom, could be a sign, though, on the other hand, that, that it, things aren't working like they need to be. All it takes is to be exercised. Your faith needs to be stirred up. Stir your faith. Spend time with God. Read the scriptures. Ah. Because, you know, what, what, the reason you need faith is because there will be moments and times when you come across situations when you don't know what to do. I mean, there might be obstacles and problems in your way that require the power of God to show up in situations. You might have a moment where I, you just don't know, you know, what in the world to do. Anyone facing a problem like that? Anyone facing a, a situation that you need God to show up? You need his hand. You need his power in your life. It could be kids that are backslidden. It could be, you know, financial problems. It could be problems in your body. I mean, you, you need the power of God, and his power is present. And his power can take obstacles and make opportunities and problems he can turn into possibilities because of his power faith and power they work together or maybe this morning you realize that you need to be more bold maybe you feel like you're not the bold witness that you need to be i feel like i could be more of a bold witness i want boldness to operate in my life in a greater way and maybe if that's you this morning I i'm just telling you that God is going to, you're going to find yourself in situations where you're going to be forced to be bold. It will happen to you in life. I like the story in Mark. It says that Jesus was sleeping on a boat and a storm arose. And it says when he awoke, he arose. He got up with boldness to confront a storm. And there will be those moments we need that. Does anyone feel like they could use wisdom, boldness, faith? Yeah. Why don't you stand up with me this morning as we close out? Because I feel like the power of God is present right now. I feel like his wisdom is available to you right now. I feel like faith is being stirred up right now. And I, I just want to pray that if you need wisdom, if you need boldness, if you want the power of God to operate, just put a hand up and I want to pray over you. Father, I pray for all these hands in this room. I pray the wisdom of God. Hmm. Father, I pray your wisdom that could penetrate hard hearts. Father, I pray... The power of God, tangible, present, available over the people of God. Lord, I pray for miracles in people's lives this week. And Lord, I pray for boldness. Mm. God, I pray the Spirit of God come upon these people. Lord, that you use them to stand up, make a stand, not back down, not be ashamed. Father, I pray a great boldness upon them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, it rise up within them. I pray the fire of God stir up. Lord, I pray that these, these precious men and women of God would step into a fullness of the Holy Spirit and fire. God, I pray you stir them like they haven't been stirred before. They would be home and on their knees and seeking God and hungry for Him like never before. You'd give us wisdom and make us bold witnesses for you. In Jesus' name. Man, I feel something just stirring up within me this morning as I pray that. I, listen, the hour's late. And I know in America we sit up cozy and comfortable in our lives, but this, this is an hour for you to wake, put off the things of the world and darkness, and walk with God. Mm. You know, I was uh, reading about a man in, in Ghana, Africa, uh, who was admitted to the hospital vomiting. He's only 25 years old. And, you know, they tried to help figure out what the problem was. And all night he vomited up blood. It was blood over the bed. There was blood over the doorway. And... And despite their best efforts, despite blood transfusions and constant care, that man died in the morning. And what they found out from his friends was they diagnosed him with a condition called esophageal varsis, which came from a cirrhosis of the liver. This man was an alcoholic, and every day he'd get up, and he would go down to the factory in Ghana where they produced gin, and he would drink from morning to night. And he was in search of happiness. But you know, your, your thirst cannot be quenched with alcohol. The only thing, the only person who can quench the thirst is Jesus. Jesus is the one who said that if anyone thirsts, let him come after me and drink, and he will never thirst again. And I just want to give you the opportunity this morning. If you're thirsty for something that cannot satisfy, I want to have you put a hand up, and I want to pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you don't know the Lord, if you're thirsty, I see that hand. I see that hand. Yeah, I, 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 I want you to pray with me. Just pray with me. Say, Father, I'm asking you to fill me 
with the fullness of your spirit. Father, I thank you for delivering me from sin. I thank you for your death on the cross, that you rose again for me. I want your living water in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you're serious, and you've made a great decision, a great rededication in your life to walk with God. Now, there's something precious about Jesus. How many of you love Jesus? Man, he's, he's the reason I don't thirst for things. He's the reason I found freedom and deliverance. Man, he's good. He's good. Amen. Mm, man. Mm. Man, I just sensed the Holy Spirit here this morning. And um, I want to just take a moment and linger in his presence. I think sometimes, you know, I, I know I, I tend to get in a rush. But I feel like God wants to, um, I feel like God wants to penetrate some hard hearts this morning. I feel in my heart that, like, maybe, maybe you're, there's a hardness in people's hearts these days. You're questioning and frustrated with certain situations in life. Wondering why bad things have happened to you and doubting that God is able to come through in situations. But I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus is able to meet every need. He, he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Hmm. I'm going to pray for people here in a moment because uh, I, I, feel, I feel fullness in my life. I feel rising up within me. Yeah. But I want to just challenge you. If, if you feel resistant, if you feel hesitant, if you don't believe God can do it, to spend time reading the Bible and this life of Jesus and what he did, and you'll see he can come through for you. He did it for me. He can do it for you. He did it all through his word. He's faithful. Amen. So we're glad you came out to Bethany Church this morning. We value, we bless you. And I just want to challenge you, man, to, in, to reach out to someone. Everyone's valuable, but everyone can be reached. Grab someone, invite them to church. And don't forget, next week, man, we're going to embark in a powerful time of revival meetings. I've been praying and fasting for these moments, and they are going to touch and impact your life in a great way. I want to invite the ministry team to come forward. If you need prayer, I want to pray with you. I, I feel like there's some answers here this morning. Maybe some things you've been waiting on. Maybe the power of God. I want to pray with you. Amen. So we love you very much, and uh, we'll catch you all next week. Amen. Love you guys.